Hello guys and welcome to a brand new video. Today I'm here with Jojo's Bizarre Adventure Stone Ocean episode number 4. Alright, the previous episode, um, in the beginning Jolene was kind of being harassed by a few of the other uh, people in this prison and she was like, you know, like lending money. Guest told her that don't do that because they're going to look down on you from now on and they're going to make you the punching bag, make you the, like, you know, like bully you from here onwards. So just don't either give away money or like take it back. And, <laughs> and Jolene was easily able to do that uh, because, you know, she's intelligent. She kind of played a little trick on the girl who actually did not want to return the money back to her and yeah she got her money back and everything like went well but then there is this weird kid kid who comes around with a baseball bat uh, with a baseball uniform and a baseball and she wants uh, he wants Jolene not to visit the person now Jotaro comes uh, Jotaro comes to visit Jolene and we get a uh, vital piece of information here Jongali A a person who has who is like a Dio's minion has a vendetta against the Joestar family and he wants to uh, kill them like you know and, and that's why like you know like he made uh, contact with the whole uh, with the lawyer and the whole situation he orchestrated it and that's why Jolene is in prison now and Jotaro is here and he wants to kill them so yeah we still don't know what his stand actually does it it's like a long range stand i think and it has uh it can shoot people i think but one uh concerning thing happened is the prison guard uh is dead now so even if they get out of this situation what are they going to answer the authorities that yeah we two are here and this guard is dead what happened obviously they're going to put the blame on either jotaro or jolene so I'm kind of concerned about that. So yeah, anyways, let's see what happens in this episode. So yeah, without further ado, let's get started. I'll be putting the subtitles and the timer here. Sync it to whichever is your preference and let's start. Okay, so here's the countdown. Three, two, one, go. Hmm. Hmm. I'm guessing um he was actually warning her to go there not because of Jotaro but because of Jongali A. Like that would make sense. Does he have like pie? Is that a pie tattoo? Or, or is that like the I think that's Jojo's normal style of, you know, like shading or something. Okay. And Jotaro gets hit here. No oh boy. Yep. Yeah. My God, it went through his head. Yeah. You'll end up dead. Oh my God, it's in here now. Great. Okay. But how is it shooting them? Oh. Okay, okay. Can Can he just stop time and defeat it like He can just stop time and like you know when time is stopped 
There's no error dynamics or anything like that. He can just stop time and go and defeat it, can't he? Or I don't know. Oh yeah, she can. Oh no, no, never mind. It's still. Yeah. Is she going to like make a decoy or something like you know like kind of <laughs> use uh, her string to distract uh, the stand? That won't work. Like this is what I'm saying. Like I think this is very easy for Jotaro to actually defeat. Like he can just stop time, and obviously when time is stopped, there'll be no air, nothing like you know like airflow or anything. Even if there is airflow, um, like you know Jongali, eh, since time is stopped. He can't shoot. So wait a minute. Here's one thing I've never thought about. Like Jongali is is a it's a long uh, distance stand. Jongali is somewhere else. Jota is going to stop time over here. So what happens during that time in the other areas? Like is time stopped over there as well? Like otherwise it wouldn't make sense. Like it would mess with space time continuum. So when Jotaro uses the word. The whole world's time is stopped. Otherwise, it wouldn't make sense. As I said, it would mess with the space-time continuum. Like only this place time is stopped and this place time is moving. That won't happen. I've never thought about it. Think like you know now that I'm thinking about this. Probably he stops the whole world's time. Otherwise, yeah, it wouldn't make sense. But if you're going to stop the whole world's time, he can easily defeat this. I don't know. Anyways, let's see what he does. The visitor 2, okay. Huh. That is a tattoo. It's, it's pie. It's written pie. Oh my god, that's his gun? <laughs> wow. Oh. Okay. <laughs> that fly. Oh, wow. If Jono was here, I would say that's Jono's stand. <laughs> the wind is the flies move. Oh my god. Wow, this guy. My god. Manhattan transfer or downtown transfer. My God, it's like thermal vision. Hmm. Okay. I'm sure Jolene is planning something. Wait. She. Oh. Oh, okay, that might work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The airflow is... But the guards will be here soon. Yeah. Um, no. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. And the fire alarm is on now. Everyone will come. Oh, great. Here we are. Wait. Oh, that's it's a kid. Don't move. Base of the. 
Filler. Wait, what would- Wait, oh my god! Whoa! Okay, let's get out. Yeah, now that the uh, sprinkler is on, they can kind of move, I guess. Little. Oh, wait, it went out. What? Oh. Uh. No. What? Oh! Well, she has no plans of doing that. Yeah. Okay. And I think defeating the stand won't do because <laughs> because this is a long range stand. Or maybe not, I don't know. Let's see. Usually long range stands, even if they get defeated, it doesn't happen much to the one who has the ability. Okay. Anyways. Maybe something to do with some stand? Or maybe that the boy itself is a stand, who knows? Whoa! Okay. Okay. Yeah, underground, he can't do anything. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> uh. Um yeah, yada yada indeed. Don't worry, you're just dreaming. Go back. <laughs> oh. My god, this place is very dangerous because obviously if Oh, there he is. True, like maybe he's just tracking him. Whoa, but oh, wait, what? How? Where is he shooting from? My god, huh? Oh, he's destroying the. Oh, my god. Okay. Um. Hmm. 
Wow. Oh, will this work? Uh, I don't know. Oh, 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 no, no, is, did, is Jotaro here? No, wait, no, okay, wait, what? Broke the oh. Gas separate from oxygen. Okay. All right. Because of the density or something. Okay. Yes. There you go. Obviously, he won't be dead because that's a. Wait. Is he dead? I don't think so. Like it's a, it was a long range stand, so I'm guessing he'll get injured, but not dead. Yeah, and why are you wearing a baseball uniform with a base? Oh my god! Oh uh, yeah, what about that? Um. Oh. It, no, he's fine. Okay. Wait. Oh, here we go. Like, yeah, obviously, that's a long range stand. Jotaro, stop time. Ah, it's, it's Jotaro. He can easily. What? Oh, yeah, that's right. True. Maybe it has something to do with water or something. No. Zawardo. <laughs> oh. Okay. Well. He really was here. How did he get over here? Wait, what? Yeah, he's not here anymore. Huh. Yeah. What? What? No. Jongle was obviously targeting him. Okay, calm down. Okay, something is happening.
Oh no, wait. What the? Okay, this is some kind of weird illusion or something. Oh my god. What? All right, yeah, this is some weird, weird illusion. What? Oh. Um Yeah. But from where? From where did it start? Oh blood blood is dropping. Drip wait what? Oh is this is she still in the oh no, wait what? Okay, sure it's just some kind of a... Okay, so from there the illusion start. Hmm. Okay. There's some here. Okay. Yeah, she never sat down. When did she sit? What? Oh, maybe the jungle is standing something else. That means it's not sniping. Wait, no. Yeah, okay. Oh. Yeah. They're not sniping. Uh Oh no. Oh my god, I think this is going to end here. Great. Um, yep, I knew it. It's going to end there. <laughs> well, <laughs> um, okay, so the thing here is so jungle, it, it could be anything, jungle is stand power, could be anything, it's not necessarily sniping. It's definitely something else. So wait, um 
When did Jotaro start telling Jolene about him being a very good sniper? Uh, was it after the illusion or was it before the illusion? If it was after the illusion, it would mean that it was actually Jongali 8 trying to make it seem to Jolene that yeah, my stand is sniping. It's related to sniping. And you know, like made her go into that illusional world. But if it was something before the illusion, if Jotaro said that, that yeah, Jongali is a great sniper, I remember he said something according, like something like that. Then probably his stand, not stand, but he is a sniper. So I'm, I don't remember when he, jo, Jotaro said that and like all that stuff. So, but anyways, um, it's not necessarily that Jongali is stand is something related to sniping it's may it may be something different it is something different obviously we can see that here so all right uh that's the end i think yep that's the end okay so yeah as i was saying so it is definitely something different um illusion or probably making people go to sleep or like you know kind of making them go into a dream world that's probably what his um uh, what do you call it what his uh stand uh, ability is now here's one thing that i realized um it's not that he is showing the illusion it's not according to him i think the illusion that jo uh, jolene is saying is probably all related to her shop subconscious because because jongali a would never know that a kid like you know the kid that uh, jolene met a kid met jolene he has he probably he, he couldn't have that information it's impossible for him to have that informa information i think so at least so since inside the illusion jolene was able to see that kid again that would mean that this illusion is according like happening according to jolene's own subconscious not according to jo uh, jongali's you know because if this if this is not, uh, illusion was something that jongali a planted in uh, jolene it wouldn't have that kid in it because jongali a himself doesn't have any information about that kid i doubt he even knows that a kid actually tried to warn her since the kid uh, appeared in the illusion i think it's probably something like you know his stand is probably something that triggers an illusion which goes on according to the targets own subconscious you know it's probably like a dream you know like as we go to sleep um uh, things that we have seen and we, which we probably have thought we we kind of see those type of things in our dream like obviously if there is something that we have no information about and we don't even know if something like uh, like you know like if, if there's like a person who, who we don't even know exists in this world obviously we won't see them inside our dream that's impossible because we don't have any information about that uh, that person so it's probably something like that so that means this illusion is probably something that is triggering Jolene's own subconscious and seeing she's seeing stuff according to her own thoughts her own experiences so that's one thing that i think is happening but i might be wrong though let's wait for it okay um <clears throat> so here's the thing they got in um jotaro says that uh you have been targeted we need to get you out of here as soon as possible and now here's here's the thing i i cannot <laughs> like i can't believe that i i missed that whole section uh it went over my head the section where jolene like you know tries to grab the bar and he she sees that there are no handcuffs i never thought about it in any way i was like wait so she doesn't have any handcuffs so and then suddenly something else happened we like you know our mind got diverted to the stand in itself and in a moment i forgot about the whole handcuff thing and like <laughs> that was a great way they actually like, you know, they, they they showed us that yeah he doesn't she does not have the handcuff and they did not let us have a single moment of you know like uh, time to let us think about wait so she doesn't have the handcuff what does that mean does that mean that she is in some kind of a weird dream or something like i i probably should have thought about it
But no, after showing the handcuff is gone, they probably like, you know, showed us, I think after that, yeah. Yeah, we see like, you know, she says that when did I get free? She looks at her hand and suddenly Jota starts screaming. Jota was like, Jolene, get away, away from the door. <laughs> and at that moment, our attention get diverted to a completely different thing. And I, at least I completely forgot about the handcuff situation. I was like, okay, like something else is more important is happening. Let's concentrate on that. And wow, that was really well done. I have to say that's like, they actually gave us the answer, but at the same time, they did it in such a manner that we actually would forget that, <laughs> yeah, that she does not have her handcuff on. So that means probably something is wrong. At least I forgot, you know, I, I really wasn't able to put together the pieces, but now that they're again showing that whole scene, you know, and Jolene says that, um, yeah, like I don't even have my handcuffs. So that, it, that means from that moment onwards, I was in an illusion. So I realized that, okay, yeah, that's what happened. And they actually gave us the answer before, but <laughs> I was too distracted with Jotaro and the whole stand thing that's happening, aerodynamics stand thing, that I didn't pay attention to that. And I forgot about that completely. <laughs> well done. <laughs> that's really well done. <laughs> okay. And yeah, obviously, and after that, we see jo Jolene gets shot and I like, you know, that shock factor starts setting in. And obviously, obviously, like, I won't be thinking about the handcuffs at that moment. I'll be thinking, like, how can Jolene get out of the situation? Like, she's shot. And one after another, like, shocking things happen after that. Really well done. That was well crafted, I have to say. <laughs> they actually made us forget about the whole handcuff. <laughs> okay, anyways, um... And okay, and then we get to the <clears throat> actual, like, you know, story, uh, not story, but this episode where uh, Jotaro and Jolie comes to a conclusion that his, his stand is somehow related to um, aerodynamics, uh, flow of air, and, um, you know, uh, something like that. He, he kind of tracks the whole place using that thing you know, uh, tracks the airflow and if someone moves or talks even, you know, the airflow will get disrupted and he can just understand where some people are. And that's how he can get like a mental image of, yeah, this person is here, this person is here and like a thermal vision or something. And he shoots and hits the target. Now, I don't know if this is just an illusion. This whole explanation of how his uh, stand ability works if this in itself was an illusion, then I don't know what his actual stand power is. It is probably something related to the illusion, but I don't know if he really is a sniper. I'm sure they'll answer our question after that. I think he is a sniper. Otherwise, yeah, most probably. Because I think Jotaro himself, yeah, Jotaro said that before that. Okay, I remember now. Like, obviously, like, you know, when the handcuff is gone, after that, like, you know, weird things start happening and we're in a constant state of emergency for Jotaro to actually give Jolene these type of information that he's a sniper and all. But that means Jotaro did give the information, but it was before that. Okay, so that means he is a sniper. And as I said, like, as I said, like, if it does make sense if he's a sniper, because uh, as I said that uh, I kind of came into a conclusion that everything that's happening is according to Jolene's sub subconscious. So... It would make sense, like, since she heard from Jotaro that he is a sniper, she kind of envisioned the whole scenario of him, like, you know, taking uh, aim and all of that. Like, he, he she, she, in her subconscious, in her dream, she came up with the whole scenario of how, like, you know, this happens and how the whole uh, situation goes. While nothing actually happens, she's actually dreaming everything. Like, it's interesting to see, like, you know, like... Uh, <clears throat> In her dream, she actually like, you know, went through like such a situation while nothing like that was happening in the real world. It was just in a dream. It was all fake. And um, okay, so anyways, uh, here Jolene comes with an uh, idea. She uh, activates the sprinklers with using the lighter. And obviously, like, you know, airflow will get a little disrupted because of water. And she takes that opportunity, the little kid comes, even though all, all of these things are happening in her dream, the little kid comes and he's like, okay, now wait a minute. 
if this really is something that's happening in Julie's subconscious, how was she able to know that the um, pillar had like such a, um, you know, like a, a hidden compartment like that? How did she know that? She never came here before this visiting room. I don't think so. Okay, this is kind of a little bit then. Maybe I'm wrong. Hmm. But then, wait a minute. Even if I'm wrong, even if this whole dream is actually something that uh, Jongali A is planting inside Jolene's head, unlike what I thought, I thought that this was according to Jolene's subconscious, but if that's not the case, how would even Jongali A know that there's like a secret compartment there? This is the women's, um, you know, like uh, building, isn't it? I doubt he came here before. Maybe he has some kind of an informant inside. I don't know, like, okay, I, let me just stop, <laughs> you know? I'm going too much, I'm trying to figure things out too much, if, even though the whole 12 episodes are already out and I'm sure they're going to give, give us the answer. <laughs> but anyways, um, so yeah, like, I don't know, like, you know, I'm still not so sure about what's happening, but I still think this is all according to Julian's con uh, con conscious. Otherwise, it wouldn't make sense why inside the dream that kid would come. Unless and until that kid is someone related to Jongalier, but that wouldn't make sense. Then why would the kid actually tell her to not go inside the visiting room? Yeah, so yeah, there are a few things that is still not so, you know, clear, but I'm sure they're going to answer the questions like how did, uh, you know, Jolie know that underneath the um, pillar, there's like a compartment if the whole thing is in a dream. Um, Maybe the kid did come inside her. Maybe the kid was like a, like, you know, was not a part of Jolene's con conscious. Maybe the kid did come to actually warn her inside the dream I'm talking about. And maybe the like, maybe that's the kid's stand or something, you know, like invading others' dream or something like that. And maybe you know when she saw that Jolene is in trouble inside the dream, he he came and he was like, okay, do this and you'll be fine. Yeah, that would make sense, you know. Like everything that's weird, that we're seeing are inside Jolene's conscious or it's something that jo uh, Jongali A is putting inside Jolene's head, inside the dream. But the only exception within it was the kid. You know, the kid was the only exception and maybe we, like, he's, he also has a stand ability and that's how he got inside Jolene's dream and helped her out. Yeah, that would make a lot of more sense. But anyways, um... Okay, so yeah, we get into the compartment. Jotaro is like, let's get out of here. Like, I don't, like, I've come here to let you, you know, get out of that situation. But Jolene is like, no, um, that kid helped me and I want to help him out uh, in turn. And then we get like a little, like, you know, like, section of uh, Jongal A kind of tracking down the kid. The kid running away. Uh, Jolene also tracking them. The kid goes inside her pipe. <laughs> tries to get away <laughs> oh my god that was funny kind of because you know like he's so small that he can get inside a pipe and just <laughs> but yeah but that doesn't doesn't work because jongali a shoots the pipe down and like yeah his sniping is really very um what can i say um he's talented like even though this was all happening in a dream i don't know if he's talented in real life or not <laughs> But still, I doubt he is, like, and I'm sure he is this talented, even in real life. So, yeah, um, he shoots the pipe through the, um, uh, the, the fans, the fan thing. And, yeah, the kid is outside. Jolene sees that they are in trouble. Jolene decides to help the kid out. Now, here's how she actually does it, as far as I could understand. Um... Jongali clearly got a you know, picture how to shoot Jolene's head, but he missed because he was actually uh, calculating the airflow according to the normal air, you know, the oxygen, the all the other stuff, the carbon dioxide that's in the air, the normal air composition. He was actually uh, calculating the air distance according to that, uh, not air distance, sorry, uh, uh, like, you know, uh, the bullet, how it will move according to that. So density, air density is a huge thing is that in these type of situation and I'm sure she actually calculated the whole scene. Uh, taking into account that there are no exceptional like you know gas inside the air. 
he he calculated the whole situation with by thinking that yeah normal air is flowing you know normal air composition but then uh, what jolene does here is she breaks the pipe uh, gas pipe and okay she says that the moment i came in i punctured this gas line um gas is lighter than air it creates a layer of gas separate from oxygen i thought it could obscure your aim man i was right okay so what she does here is actually break the gas pipe the gas is lighter than air and it kind of makes a uh, like you know varied density like you know like like the gas kind of goes down the oxygen kind of comes up all that stuff happens which actually messes with the whole air current situation and jungle air doesn't know that he just shoots obviously air density is as i said like for especially for long distance shots air density and air like you know flow all this matters hugely so since the density kind of got a little bit messed up there uh, his calculation failed uh, it should have shot in Jolene's head, but since the density got changed, it actually went a little sideways and it, it hit somewhere else. So that's how it worked, as far as I could understand. And uh, yeah, wow, like, wow, coming up with that type of thing in a matter of seconds, <laughs> as expected of a Joestar. <laughs> but yeah, and then, like, you know, jo Jotaro comes in, Jotaro's like, uh,. Jotaro's like, what the hell are you doing? You are, like, you know, no, there was no kid here. And, like, you know, like, uh, and jo Jolene's like, I de defeated Jongali Ace stand. I'm sure, like, you know, like, he's, like, obviously it was a long range stand, so he was just injured. But at the same time, he, it was also inside a dream, so it doesn't matter, I guess, you know, if, he defe if she defeated the stand or not. It doesn't matter. It was inside a dream. So... And I can see that from here onwards, Jolene's, like, you know, the blood that was flowing is gone completely. Like, before this, all this time, we were seeing the little blood trickling down, but it's there, not there anymore. <laughs> and uh, Jotaro, like, you know, Jolene says that, oh, Jongale is, is behind you. Jotaro uses his stand to kind of defeat that person or whoever. And then we are starts, uh, stuff starts happening. Jo, uh, jo, Jotaro says that, oh, who were you following? Joelin is like, I was following the kid. The kid is not here. Jotaro is like, no, you came here all alone. And um, <laughs> Joelin is like, wait, so what, what happened to Jongalie? And then she looks at the body and she's like, wait, that's not Jongalie. That's the officer. Wait, the officer is not dead. <laughs> There's no bullet wound. And then he, she's like, wait, you're also not injured. What's happening with you? What's happening with me? I'm also not injured. <laughs> the whole world starts, like, you know, um, crumbling because obviously I think it happened when she hurt her hand on the bone. And that's when everything starts getting messed up and she starts seeing these type of weird illusions uh, and it starts realizing that, yeah, this something's wrong with this world. And that's how she breaks out of that whole illusion spell or the dream that she was dreaming. And she realizes that, yeah, this world is something's wrong with this world. That must mean something is weird is happening. What is weird happening? And then she start, starts connecting the dots. She's like, wait, I don't have my handcuffs. What happened with my handcuffs? What happened to the bullet wounds? And then she realizes, OK, this is a dream. I'm in an illusion or whatever hypnosis or something like that. She wakes up and she sees weird blue slime type of substances flowing all around and the uh, what is it called the room with the visiting room it's it's melting everything and Jotaro would probably be in a no not would probably she he is in a big in big trouble because he's sleeping and the whole slime is kind of melting and you know Jolene tries to use her stand. Unfortunately, she can't do this in this situation. So yeah, let's wait for it. What he, she does after this, um, probably the next episode. So yeah, that was a fantastic episode. I love this, like you know, and um, yeah, like uh, obviously I'm sure, like you know, all the questions that I ask obviously have all the answers. Like, so like no need to actually like you know tell me those. I'm I'm sure I'm going to uh, realize as I like you know keep watching. Uh, it's just like you know me making 
<laughs> trying to figure out what's happening and just talking <laughs> so yeah and um uh, okay yeah uh, also yeah uh, this episode I have been recording. I, I I think I also uploaded another episode reaction yesterday. Today I'm going to upload another reaction. Tomorrow, most probably, I'm going to also upload another reaction. And then again, I'll take a little break, you know, because uh, I think that these three days that I'm going to upload the reactions, I my you know my I have a lot of free time. That's why I'm doing uh, like you know the episodes in these three. Uh, successive days and then i'm going to take quite a big break because in, on those days i have a lot of things going on on my own so i won't be able to upload them so as i said just like i said three episodes per week and i'm trying to do that you know like um like the previous week i completed the three episode quota this week it starts from today one episode then tomorrow i'll probably upload another episode and then take a little break you know three or four days and then another episode so uh yeah like in my timeline it's i think it's going to go with like in my timeline today is wednesday uh not timeline sorry time zone what am i even saying <laughs> too much i'm watching too much anime <laughs> okay in my time zone <laughs> today is um wednesday uh, when i'm recording this uh the previous episode that i uploaded was tuesday and tomorrow is thursday so i'm going to do it like this tuesday wednesday thursday again Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, like this. So yeah. Anyways, that was it. Thank you guys for watching. This was my reaction to Jojo's Bizarre Adventure Stone Ocean episode number um number four. Yeah, episode number four. So if you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to press the like button, subscribe if you're new to the channel or you haven't subscribed, and comment down below anything you want to say, anything you want to love, uh tell, but no spoilers. And uh, yeah, I'll definitely check them out. So that's it. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys next, uh, not next week, probably tomorrow with another episode of Jojo's Bizarre Adventure uh, Stone Ocean. So until then, goodbye and have a nice day.